Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clementson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general advice or mentorship, you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the motivation, the strategies, and the support you need to become the very best Lone Recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, today I want to dissect a $1.2 million recruitment desk. We are lucky enough to have people like that in our office, and I want to really just share with you what that looks like. It's actually quite simple. So um, I'm going to kick straight into it. So I'm not going to give you too much detail about who this person is. They didn't really want to pop their head up and say, hey, look at me, I'm doing so well. Um, but they were happy enough to share all the things they do right, all the things they do wrong, and and I guess how, how they arrived at getting those sort of figures. So the first observation I have about this individual is that they just do the simple things really bloody well. Okay, recruitment, I've said this time and time again, is not a complicated game. We tend to make things complicated, but he just does things. It was actually quite a simple strategy, and he just did did it really, really well. Quick break. We had an overwhelming response to episode 86, which was the 2024 recruitment desk planning. Now, a ton of people reached out and asked if we could help them. We can't get to everyone, but it got me thinking. I don't normally do this, but due to the response, I've decided to open up a limited amount of one-on-one coaching spots. I'm going to work with you one-on-one to create clear goals for your desk and bulletproof plan to achieve them. No more frustration at not hitting your numbers. No more self-doubt about what to do next. Just execute the plan, achieve the results you deserve. DM me, 90-day plan, and we'll send you the details. Strictly first in, best dressed. Side note, I'm so confident that you're going to love it and you're going to get value out of this that I will give you 100% money back if you think otherwise. Which brings me to the next bit. There was a strategy. There was a plan. There was very thought out plan of attack, which clients we're going to gravitate to, which ones we're not going to talk to or we're not going to do too much with. What is my strategy with regards to headhunting and really you know, zoning, honing in on particular clients and their needs, as well as, you know, what, where is the market hot and where I'm going to take these candidates to market and do some canvassing. It was really just well thought out, well considered, well focused plan and executed really, really bloody well. So, you know, again, keeps that strategy really simple. It's not an overly complex strategy. Had five to six key clients that he knew had, you know, work articulated to those clients where they are in the pecking order, when to expect him to be working on it. Communication with clients was absolutely impeccable. We're starting today. or We'll, we'll get into the journey in two weeks' time. Cool, we're here now. We're going to get stuck into it. Here's the numbers. Here's the results. These are not exclusive roles. He, he acts like they are, but he definitely um, carries himself in a handshake manner. I'm going to do this for you. You do this for me. Keep it. Keep the work with me. Don't go external. We don't need to tie ourselves up in contracts. He's very. It's a. It's a. It's a. It kind of counterintuitive in a lot of ways, but it works for him, right? So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um. Believe it or not, uses ads on Seek, Career One, our website, uh, LinkedIn. Uses ads to their full extent. Has a budget. Uses it. It you know, uses it a lot and uses it well. Doesn't just throw ads up for the sake of it either. We'll go, you know what? This one is, I already know the market for this one. Why do I even need to bother putting ad up? Or this one's a very good one for advertising. This is going to be the hook. This is the angle. I've got my headhunting, you know, um, mapped out over here. If I were to get someone from an ad, this is the sort of person I'd want. So I'd skew my ad in a particular way to try and attract someone who might be in-house that he might have missed or whatever. Um very good at activating a referral network, both on candidate side and client side. So has done some great work previously, would speak to them and, you know, catches up for coffees, catches up for lunches and things like that. And they're very, he's good at activating his clients to get other clients that might have recruiting needs. Um, and very good at finding companies that are on a growth path. Okay. So not like big corporates, they're not like big you know, um, big blue chip companies that we all know the brand names for of where it's, it's highly competitive. He's actually kind of finds these pockets of companies that are a little bit hidden, might not be uh, not, not be considered sexy, but he finds that if he finds that they've got a great story, 
got good people in there. They're actually competing with the big guys, but maybe under the radar. That's the sweet spot, right? Because he can use that narrative. He can he can he can be something different in the market to other recruiters and and can and offer something that other people can't offer. So you know, being quite again quite conscious about the companies that he's aligning himself with. Um. Easy one has LinkedIn alerts working for him, so he's got he's open to opportunities. He's got previous um, placements in lists in LinkedIn, all with alerts saying this person's activating themselves for for job searches. This person's open to opportunities. This person's taking a new job. Just very aware uh, about his network and his and his um, candidate pool. Um, he definitely has a VA on his side who just does data cleansing, data management, and helps pull that stuff together as well. So again, I've done whole episodes on VAs, virtual assistants, who who can just amplify what you do. You can't get through that much stuff. That's a great use for a VA. Um, and on that VA, um, has, has them capturing a lot of jobs. Just so, and it's not even to chase, he has a mindset that if he gets a client over here, who's looking for X and he finds a bunch of people for that client because they're not exclusive. He then will pull up all the jobs that are in the market that his VA has um, catalogued and go, cool. Hey guys, calls them. There's X, Y, Z jobs also in the market. Would you like to look at them? Oh yeah, yeah, I would. And now he starts to push these CVs over that way. Again, recruitment 101, but as I said at the beginning, doing the simple things extremely, extremely well and um, methodically. Um, The big one, and I've been punching on about this one since COVID, face-to-face meetings, face-to-face briefings. Get in your client's grills. Go and meet them. Go and see them. Whenever you see a client, there's almost like this glory window of two weeks post that meeting of when you call, they pick up. Oh, I know what they're doing for me. Yes, I need to take this call. Because when you sit in a room with something, there is an exchange. It's time. It's energy. They give you a job. You give them a commitment. There is like, all of a sudden we're doing a tango together. We're doing a dance together. And there's this beautiful period after that meeting where you get absolute, uh, it's like they know what you're out there doing for them and they're a bit of a dick if they don't respond to what you do. Because if you don't have those meetings, we've all seen it, where you've got a candidate on interview and clients are a little bit unresponsive. But again, very good at face-to-face meetings for the briefings that, that, that we're targeting, okay? Um I think deal size helps. You know, I think we can harp on about quantity of deals. And I think that everyone can really should be focusing on quantity of deals and deal size shouldn't matter. But I can tell you now that it does help when you've got 50, 60, 80K placement sizes. It helps. Um, and, and something to look at. Like if you're in a market that doesn't yield you those sort of fees, there is always a market that does. So maybe that's something that you need to look at. Um but look, you know, when he's doing those big placements, when he's going, this is a 100K fee, um, he's very conscious that that is still a, a big wad of cash. So once he makes those placements, he goes post, post-placement, post flies wherever he needs to fly within the country, takes him, takes the client out and the candidate out for a really nice lunch, does FaceTime, does the dance, does the thanks, all that sort of stuff. So when that invoice does land, there's no, oh, my God, this is – a 30% invoice, what is this about? They understand the value. Got the brief, did the dance, filled the role, took us out, celebrated. We're all friends here. And he said his goal was to actually just make sure that people I'm doing work with like me. I don't think people think like that a lot, particularly young recruiters. They they think they want people to like you, but you can also get a bit exuberant and uh, onto the next deal and just about the quick buck. We hear that a lot. If you actually care, if people can actually trust you, they're going to keep buying from you. So... Um, his whole thing was when I'm making these big placements, post placement, I'm out there doing a doing a dance, doing a dinner, shaking hands, having fun, making sure that they like me. I thought that was really really valuable because we all do that at the beginning. A lot of us do that at the beginning to get the business, but once we've closed the business, I think that's when we all can celebrate. Um, huge one for him. Every so a 1.2 million dollar biller, you think well, they know what they're doing? They're clearly good. He was very good at pulling in people, other people within the business to what we call twilight every single deal. So twilight is 
we're at final stages, we're at offer stage, we're about to get the offer, we're about to close the deal. We, we go, need to talk this one through. So we want to basically, what is the line of attack? How are we going to get this one from we're about to make an offer to we've closed it and signature's coming? So we, we play that out. What are some of the challenges that are going to come up? How are we going to get around them or overcome them? What do we need to address before we get to the offer? Sometimes, you know, he would come to me sometimes and say, got an offer, this is it, this is what they're on, this is what they're asking for. This might be an issue, but I think we just go for it. We might, you know, that objectivity that I could bring or someone else can bring might mean let's add another call in there, let's address this bit so that the unknown is now known before we do the offer. Simple stuff like that. And again, I know all people in your offices do that. I was really guilty in the past of not doing it. Just thought, nah, I knew better. And I reckon I lost deals because I didn't pull people in to say poke holes in my deal. Okay, so twilighting every single deal, $1.2 million worth of placements, that's a lot of time that they're pulling in for, but you've got to get really good at getting other people in to check your work. Put your ego at the door. Um, that's, that, that's the main crux. That, that is the life of a $1.2 million bill. Nothing, nothing too sexy, nothing too revolutionary, but as I said at the top, this does all the simple things really, really well. And if you're making 1.2 million bucks in a year, you're obviously doing something right. So you know who you are. Good on you. And um, yeah, that's it. Caveat, I'll put on the side here, not a pure biller. In this, in this quarter alone, hired someone, finishing off a renovation, has a one-year-old and lives through it. Right? The guy's a machine. Um, still gets time to take you know half a day off on Fridays, time to travel and see family and friends. Doesn't seem overly stressed. He's just doing the simple things really bloody well. That's all I have time for you today. If you got anything out of today's episode, if you think someone in your business would like this episode, share it, like it, subscribe it. It helps us grow and it is growing. We love it. Thank you. Um, as always, have an amazing day. and May all your deals come true.